All right, so I had every intention on part three of this video. I was just going to take these, get them all painted and finished, and have myself some Iron Man gauntlets. Maybe even attach them just to some of these cotton gloves. But to tell you the truth, I've always been obsessed with the idea that the gloves in the movies always have these ribbed parts that go in the fingers. They're not just a glove underneath it. And I know a lot of cosplayers just go with the glove. It's probably a lot more comfortable and it's just easier to move your hand in. But frankly, I've been obsessed with the idea of doing the full gauntlet and actually having the ribbing in there. I know people have sold the ribbing before. I've seen people online, uh, but I'm also kind of obsessed with making things myself. So. Uh, I'm gonna give it a shot and that's what I'm doing in this video. I'm actually going to try to 3D print that ribbing. I'm gonna see how it looks. I'm gonna see how it feels. Uh, I'm then going to try to see how they fit inside the gloves. And so that's what I'm doing. Let's see, can we do the ribbing without making complicated silicone molds? And just how does this work? Is it something that you should even attempt? This bottle of resin is full. I have not attempted this. Uh, so let's talk about what we're doing. So. This is Resi 1. I'm going to pronounce it that way. It's R-E-S-1. It's R-E-S-I-O-N-E. -E, Resi 1. And this is called F80 Elastic Resin. Uh, I found this stuff on Amazon. You can buy it directly from their website, which you can find a link to down below. Uh, it's not cheap. Um, with the printer this size, I'm not going to buy any jar of resin that's less than a kilogram. This bottle was about $80 or so. Uh, so it's not cheap resin. Everywhere on the listings you will find that this stuff is not easy to print with. So it's only for experienced resin users, which I'm going to say I am for the sake of this video. The good news is, is they have a lot of settings on their website. You can find pretty much everything you need for almost any brand of printer where they've already done the settings. So I've uh, downloaded the settings and ported them into my slicer. I'll show you a little bit of that here about how you know, you find them on their website, you download them, you unzip them, you import them, and then, supposedly, uh, you should be able to print this stuff out. Now, they also have some other settings that will cover everything from getting your supports just right. I'm actually not going to do that yet because I really am a little worried about messing up my slicer. I don't know how that import, export, change it back kind of works. I am going to go with my stock supports, but with their settings. Now, one thing I noticed is the settings for this machine and this resin is at a 0.1 layer height instead of the usual resin 0.05. I'm going to start with the 0.1. We're going to see how it looks. If I can't tell any difference, that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, and again, then we're going to figure out how it feels. Does it feel right? Did I size it correctly? I did go into Mesh Mixer after, you know, you saw me last time I reoriented everything and and got all the fingers exactly the right size, but I didn't do anything with that webbing, which actually did come with the model from Do3D. Uh, and this one, I realigned all that webbing, sized everything up like 1.1 times, uh, just to see how it looks. So this is the F80. We're going to get it poured in here. I'm gonna take a look at the viscosity of this stuff. I think it's gonna be really, really thick, a lot like my engineering grade resin. So let's get started. Uh, let's get over here to my Sonic Mega 8K. Again, this video is sponsored by Frozen because this has just been the best thing for resin printing I have ever owned. And I'm not just saying that because they sponsored this video or because they gave me the printer. Um, I'm saying that because I don't have failed prints on this thing. I pour resin in, I download uh, slicer settings that are provided by all sorts of fantastic resin companies, by Frozen themselves, and I just, I just print. And you know, there's all the resin stuff you always have to do, but this has just been fantastic for the whole resin process. Uh, cleaning up a resin printer after failed prints is just a pain. So to have a resin printer that I think I've cleaned up felt prints on once, and it was because I was doing some testing, it's been fantastic. So let's get over here, let's pour this stuff in, and I will stop talking. Venom grade stuff here. Yeah, this stuff is really, really thick. I think I'm just gonna pour in the whole bottle of this. Uh, that's viscous or not viscous. Really, really thick. Yeah, like motor oil that's been in a car for too long. Okay. All right, let's get it sliced and printing. So 
So you remember when I was talking about the slicer, I said I wasn't going to port over the support settings. I just was gonna give it a shot as is, and well, that's what you get when you uh, skip the manufacturer's recommendations. I've got one finger up here, and I've got two fingers down here still attached to the uh, FEP. So apparently I should have gone for their recommendations on those uh, supports, but the good news is, is this still gives me plenty to actually test out. Because I only really need one to kind of get the feel for it, see how it fits. But let me get all that done, and once I get it off the bed, I will, I'll give it a shot. And we can uh, see how it does. This doesn't look like it's completely unusable. Um, it, it's most of it. I got, I've got pieces of, of fingers here. That sounded gross. I'll get that off the traditional way in just a second. All right, I skipped ahead at this point, went ahead, cleaned things up, and got these prints off the build plate. And I even got the ones off the bottom that came unstuck. Again, my fault, I didn't follow the instructions properly. Anyway, so I've got the finger bends. Uh, I am happy that they do seem to uh, flex well but unfortunately they also seem pretty brittle um, I've broken several of them into pieces so I got that they they're they're good and flexible I like the material the feel of it it's fine but as I said I'm breaking these pretty easily so they're not exactly working the way I want them to I'm not sure if this material is gonna be the right material for something like this that has to be somewhat durable because I'm wearing it I was playing with it in the glove and it might work in the glove but I'm just not 100% sure so I'm gonna try one more time with this I'm gonna print two things this time I'm going to print these fingers but this time I'm going to use all their proper support settings that they will hopefully succeed uh, and I'm also going to print a actual wrist guard that would bend underneath the wrist uh, similar to the one that would go in the elbow as well and I'm going to see a, a couple of things number one I'm going to see if I print these fully and they're a little bit thicker if they're going to work and if they'll actually fit my fingers properly um, which these really didn't and I had to upscale them and then I'm also by printing the wrist guard I'm going to see is this stuff more durable if it's printed large if it has enough wall not only that but how flexible is it if you print it fairly thick normally something like the wrist guard I would print just out of TPU and then paint that uh, or, or just print out of black TPU we're gonna try this it'll be probably my last attempt if it doesn't go well so that's it uh, let's give this a shot one more set of prints let's go all right round two let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have and well it doesn't look like everything succeeded uh up here our three fingers did succeed this time so that's fantastic i'm glad to see that the new support settings did work on those unfortunately it looks like this most likely uh got too heavy for the build plate and actually it ripped off the build plate the supports didn't fail or anything like that it just ripped off the build plate so we're gonna pull this out this is still testable just because it ripped off the build plate like that doesn't mean we are uh, dead in the water on that one uh, i can still test it i can still do my thickness uh fragility test i was going to do so let's go ahead i'm gonna pull this guy out of here because i don't think we're completely dead here and then this guy needs to come out and we'll get this all cleaned up. Uh, I'll show you the results after I get them cleaned up and get them cured. Then we'll run some tests on them again, see if they are strong enough to actually do the job. All right, so I, I went to clean up here and I noticed that um, there's a mess in here. Now there was some notes either on the website or on the bottle or something about not leaving it in here for too long. Like if you're not gonna print for a day or something, make sure you empty it out but I didn't really expect this. Yeah, it's been about 24 hours since that print has finished, but I don't know where this sludge is coming from. Um, I'm obviously gonna have to filter this out, clean it up uh, as I put it back into its container, but I wasn't expecting a, a sludge monster from uh, leaving it in here. I really don't know what that could have been from. So anyway, I did wanna show you that. This stuff definitely takes some special care if you're gonna use it. I will also mention that my son has uh, 
expressed that he really hates the smell of this stuff. I don't notice it as much, but it fears that it may affect some people more than others. Back to cleaning. All right, everything's off the build plate, out of the wash, out of the curing. Let's take a look and see what I've got here. Finger things. First of all, how do they fit? Uh, not bad. Now when I pull on this, is it going to tear up? Uh, not really. Try one of the bigger ones. Works. Uh, it's not breaking. It's a good sign. Next one. There we go. I don't know why this one's shaped quite as tight as it is. I think I'd have to upscale this one a bit, but they might be working. I don't know why the first ones were so brittle. Let me go ahead. I'll reprint these if I want to use them anyway, so... That's got a pretty good give to it. If I pull it this way, will it come apart? Mm, not easily. It's a lot better than I expected. And this is the wrist one that obviously came off. Uh, it actually came off the build plate itself because it was uh, too heavy, I believe, and it just pulled off. So I'm gonna need more surface area on the build plate to keep it adhered. This is tough. Yeah. <clears throat> that's tough that's not going anywhere uh, so what I would be really tempted to do with this if I wanted to wear it for the cosplay number one it's too thick and it's too durable it looks like for me to actually get it on my wrist uh, let me get some scissors let's uh, cut off the bad part as you can see it started shifting early I'm guessing it kind of started peeling off of the build plate uh, and caused a problem so let me cut off it wow that is tough yeah this is really tough it's even hard to cut it does take a fair amount of cleaning there's some of this that's not quite as clean as I would want it to be if I was going to wear it uh, still can be clean though we're not past the point of not being able to clean it up all right so looking at a cross section of this uh, pretty solid looking pretty good there cross section looks good there Mm. You can break it if you pull hard enough. And this, again, it's not going to be big enough to fit over my wrist. Um, but I'm not breaking it, that's for sure. Uh, let me see what it'd look like if I cut it. So here would be the other option, is you could cut it and re-seam it and make it look like a pretty good wrist there. Uh, it'd be really tempting if I wanted to do something like this. I would consider probably backing it with a um, some elastic. So if I backed it with just a little bit of elastic, line it up really well, um, use some good glue, should be able to pull it apart and it bounce back to where it came from. Uh, it's either that or some elastic strapping and that might work. So, looks like I'm uh, a lot happier with this stuff than I thought I was going to be. Uh, it's a lot tougher than those initial prints made it out to be. I don't know if they were just too small or, you know, if I screwed up somehow making them. Who knows? But these are not half bad. Um, so the texture's uh, a little weird. It's very rubbery. It's very um, tacky still. Not tacky, really. Tacky, and it, you know, makes it sound like it's still... Uh, uncured or something. Uh, I am curious to see what happened if I threw it in there for a little bit longer on the curing. Does it ever get kind of rid of that tacky feeling? Again, not tacky, just, just really non-slip. Um, anyway, there we go. This is the F80 from Resi One. Not a sponsored video by them. And uh, just taking a look at this to see if I want to incorporate it into my glove. So uh, that's it for this video. I'm going to go, I'm going to see what I can figure out in terms of like how to integrate this. Uh, how does it feel if I wear it? I'm going to see how I can integrate this into my gloves, uh, into my wrist potentially. It, it is a solution. Um, I'm also going to just try some TPU. Uh, and do some comparisons versus some TPU. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Again, trying out some elastic resin. Uh, it's very interesting, and uh, I think it's very promising. So, uh, I'm Chris. This has been Crazy Fabrications, and I will see you in the next video where hopefully I finish up these gauntlets.